We will now take a quick look at how uh, you can train a face detector. Uh, this is the a second demo that was uh, created by Clement Farabé is again in Torch 7 demos and it's called the train a face detector. The main file is train a face detector. I will not go into every single detail of this network but I wanted to give you like a good idea of how uh, neural networks are trained with Torch in the most one of the best uh, uh, kind of scripts that was uh, written by, by Clement a few years ago. Uh, so first of all, you you load up all the packages, uh, the image package, the extension of the neural network package. This opt-in package is an optimization package that uh, is is used for training. This file has a lot of options. Um, there's an option to uh, save the network that you that you learn. Um, and save a file uh, and you have to decide where you want to save it. Uh, you can reload something pre-trained and continue to train it. Um, and then as a link to the data set, so that's the data set where uh, the faces are. Um, and then uh, there are other links to uh, different data sets. Um, test set, so it was what percentage of the test what you want to use as, as test, um, number of patches that one wants to use to train, and if you want to visualize things and uh, the seed for the random initialization. Uh, since this is a training script and usually uh, stochastic gradient descent needs a good precision, uh, then the default tensor is double tensor, so fully 64 bit. So this is a simple script that trains a comnet on a phase detection data set using SGD or stochastic gradient descent. Basically it shows how to describe the network, how to create a cost function, minimize how to instantiate the trainer, create a data set and run the trainer and, and train it basically. Uh, this is the whole point. So then we will basically define the network that has to be trained. So this is how uh, really Torch sets up a network uh, to train. So what you do is, uh, um, if, if it wasn't loaded before, you can create a new network. And you keep adding layers. So this is a special contrastive normalization layer, which takes the input image and normalizes it um, with the Gaussian of 5, so that you have special local normalization so that you are insensitive basically to um, the um, illumination, difference in illumination in different parts of the image. This is a very important step that um, is basically a small model of uh, retinal preprocessing that is done um, for us. You then uh, do the meet of the convolution neural network, which is a special convolution you have a 5 five by 5 filter, 8 of them, and the input is just one because, as you recall, we use only an, um, a Y luminance image. It could be free if you're using RGB. You do an hyperbolic tangent, then you do a special max pooling on a neighborhood of 4, and you skip 4, so every 4 pixel, every 4 by 4 pixel, every, um, yeah, 4 by 4 pixel, you turn them into 1 pixel, and then you skip another 4x4, four four, so you try to compress quite a bit the network. Uh, this is the where the subsampling happens, so this is the 4 ratio. Then you create a second uh, spatial convolution. This time you uh, use a, a map in order to not to create too many connections. So you have 8 input from the previous layer, so you had 8 maps that uh, have been compressed by this max pooling, but there's still 8 maps. Um, you go into 64 maps uh, and you create a random connection um, of four. So four, four inputs, four random uh, inputs from the input planes, four random input planes will connect to one of the output planes. Um, you generate um, all of these, all of these random connections. Uh, with the 7x7 seven seven kernel, and then you convolve with the 7x7 seven seven kernel. 
you go through a hyperbolic tangent again. Uh, then you reshape the output and you create just a linear classifier uh, that is uh, from the 62 vector into 2. So one would be phase, one would be, for example, background. You could also load the network if uh, that's what you chose. You can, um, you can then load all the parameters for the training and then you can choose a criterion. So this is the mean square error criterion, which is the simplest one that you can train on your network with. Uh, and that's basically what you normalize this cost function for. At this point, you can then create a data set, which means you're really loading it. If it's already created, you're not really creating it from scratch in here. Um, so what you do is load the face, face the data, data sets. You very important you shuffle them so that the same face doesn't appear multiple times uh, in a row, because then your gradients would all go in that direction for a while. You really need to shuffle all the data. And then you load the background, so there's going to be another data set with the face. So you append uh, the file option data set with the face, and then you also load the background. There might be extra files, so false positive, false negatives, and so forth, but those are the two main uh, important things. And then you shuffle all the backgrounds, basically. Uh, you create a subset for, for testing, so um, of this all this data, you take, for example, here 80% to do training and 20% to do testing. And then you create this uh, train data, which is the classic uh, data structure that Torch uses to train this uh, neural network. And train data, basically a list that has all the all the faces, and uh, the other one that has all the backgrounds. And then you have the testing set that has, you know, part of it is faces, part of it is background. We then create a confusion matrix. So here there's just two classes, either face or background. So that's a confusion matrix that you want to see how many of them fall in the wrong place. And then you basically have the train and test uh, routine. Uh, so we, we won't go into too much details here, but this is the function train data set. Um, it's a little bit of a more sophisticated version of the one that uh, is explained in the torch manual. And it's just because it includes all the tricks to make uh, make it train quite fast, like batch sizes and so forth. So it creates a mini batch, um, it creates a mini batch, um, loads the samples, and then evaluates uh, the function of the neural network basically and its derivative. Um, and so what it does is uh, it, it, it gets the grad um, the gradient parameters are zeros. And then with the criterion, it does the forward. Uh, with uh, the output of the network and the targets, it computes the error, and then it back propagates uh, to estimate the derivative and the gradients, update the confusion matrix, and then it visualizes. Um, you can normalize also the gradients. And at the, at the end, you just return. And then there's an optimization function for SGD that basically takes all the parameter learning rate and so forth uh, and optimizes it for the task. It also takes the time that it takes for you to compute the time that it takes for you to train to do one, uh, one uh, set of this uh, training, prints the confusion matrix, and it saves all the files. There's also a test function that pretty much does the same thing for the test set, uh, so it loads all the test the data set and it just uh, take uh, computes uh, forward the input, forwards the input to the network model, and you just uh, try to to see if it was uh, uh, if it was correct or not, and then you plot all the ver the various parameters. At the end, the training is very quick because you just uh, train, you, you run the script train and you run the script test in a sequence, infinite sequence, and you stop whenever you want. <coughs> and that's how you train a neural network for faces. <coughs>